Welcome back, Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy, and let's talk about all of the Easter eggs, references, and little things that you might have missed in the first trailer for Star Wars Visions. So first of all, what is this show? This is an anthology show where several of the top anime studios have total freedom to reimagine the Star Wars universe, so it doesn't have to fit within any canon or timeline. They can just use the template of Star Wars to tell badass stories, which is very exciting. Star Wars has always had Japanese films in its DNA. George Lucas was heavily inspired by the work of Akira Kurosawa, especially The Hidden Fortress. You can even see the influence more heavily in The Mandalorian. Now, there are actually nine episodes of this show. Based on descriptions, we can guess what footage applies to each episode, but we may get a few wrong here and there. Apologies in advance. So, I'm going to describe the episodes and some of the Easter eggs that we see in this first trailer. Now, The Duel is, I think, the most visually stunning episode that we see here. It's in black and white, except for flashes of color relating to lightsabers, energy blasts, or this kyber crystal. This film looks so Kurosawa, I hope his family makes royalties from it. The creators describe this as a film where someone has to make a selfless choice, and we see the hero facing off against a Sith warrior who has this badass fan weapon to deflect blaster bolts. Now notice she's fighting against a protocol droid like Forlom in the original trilogy, who's firing a Gatling gun like we saw in episode one of The Mandalorian. Lopen Ocho is the story that drives the narrative of the trailer. Long ago, a great warrior came to this village and entrusted our ancestors with this. Its power and responsibility now lie with you. I accept this responsibility. The bunny character, Lope, is a deep cut Star Wars Easter egg to Marvel Comics Star Wars number eight from 1977. So when George Lucas saw that Marvel created a cartoon bunny for his universe, he demanded that the Marvel editorial staff no longer use anthropomorphic animals and run all of their stories by him first. Now this episode takes place at the Boonta Eve racetrack that we saw in The Phantom Menace. It's called Tatooine Rhapsody and it's a Star Wars rock opera. We can even see the main character performing at the arena where we see several Star Wars species like Rodian, Chicken Man, and your mom. It wouldn't surprise me at all if these shots of Boba Fett and Slave One are also from this episode, given the similar animation styles. Let's make this our best show ever! A lot of the trailer is dedicated to the twins. A story that's the inverse of Luke and Leia. It's about two Force-sensitive twins who are born to the dark side. So one of the twins is trying to save the other from the darkness. Notice their duel takes place on top of two Star Destroyers, because remember, this series is not beholden to any kind of Star Wars continuity. We see other shots of the twins being grown in a lab, surrounded by people with bandaged faces and robes, more than likely some kind of Sith cultists who are cloning them to be dark side warriors. Next, we have The Elder, which focuses on the Padawan-master relationship. I'm guessing this film is in these clips, where we see an old man turn evil in front of his pupil. My guess is this is actually a dark side vision, like when Luke faced his failure in the cave. It could even be the final trial that the student must face, how to defeat his own master and bring him back from the darkness. Now this one looks like the most fun. It's about a droid named 20B1, or 2B1, who dreams of one day becoming a Jedi. The idea of Force-sensitive droids is actually one of the few aspects of the Star Wars universe that hasn't been explored to death, so I'm very excited for this episode. Now, the episode I'm looking forward to the most is called The Ninth Jedi. It was originally going to be two different short films, but then they were combined to make one long, epic story. It's set in an era where the Jedi have disappeared and become legends. Then, the daughter of a lightsaber smith, which is an awesome concept, has to seek out different Jedi and deliver their weapons to them to bring the Order back from extinction. Now, these other Jedi are eight warriors who come together, and they learn they're Force-sensitive, and they learn to trust each other and the Force. So, like I said earlier, some of these were very easy to guess from the descriptions in the footage, but others are more difficult. For instance, there's the village bride, about a woman on the eve of her wedding day who makes a choice to save her people. Similarly, there's Akakiri, about a princess who is described as beautiful and painful. And just to round up a few Easter eggs, we also see Force using Warrior take down stormtroopers, feasing their stun blasters in place like we first saw Kylo Ren do in The Force Awakens. We also see him destroy Adats in this Imperial type shuttle. We also see a modified TIE fighter and that speeder bike chase at the end. Wow. So let me know what you think. Are you excited for Star Wars Visions? Tell me in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.